What's going on guys? This is Javier Agitated Monkey and uh, I'm bringing you today a sweet little tutorial. Um, first tutorial I've ever done uh, on this channel and it's going to be on 3D motion tracking. I'll show you guys an example just kind of semi what it's gonna look like. See you got some nice text here revolving around and I didn't actually choose the best cinematic for it but it's whatever it, it'll do. You'll, you'll get the idea of how to do it. Um, so let's go ahead and start here. What we're going to be doing is uh, taking a cinematic that you have and then make sure that you have beforehand. You have, this is a folder here, just an empty folder that you'll be able to specify for where the uh, sequence is going to go. Because what you're going to do is you're going to take your, your cinematic, make it comp or whatever, go to your position, add to render queue, and go to output module, and then change the format to TIFF sequence because essentially what you're going to be doing is taking each frame and making an individual TIFF picture image with it uh, and then it's going to load up into that folder is what you need to designate it as by doing the output too if you do not do that then you're going to be screwed because you're going to fill up your desktop with like um, tons of photos and images and that would not be very professionally looking or pretty or nice whatsoever unless you're into that kind of thing which would be very weird alright so make sure its destination is the folder that you provided um, and then go ahead and hit save and then you're going to hit render so um, it shouldn't take too long here I'll just let you guys know that uh, when I was starting editing or whatever I, I saw this like 3D motion tracking stuff and at first I was just like there's no way I'm going to learn how to do that because I didn't want to deal with like all bunch of different programs you know I I'm After Effects only with all of my editing and so it's like you know uh, I would much rather just stick with just After Effects rather than I don't. I mean, I have a Mac too, so I don't use Sony Vegas. Um, uh, just plain old After Effects, and then um, I saw that you know with the 3D motion tracking, you have to get into Cinema 4D and you have to get Bujou and all that stuff. And I was just like, I don't want to do it, and it looks too complicated. But it really isn't. Um, it's quite simple actually. So once this stupid thing and keep uh, finishes rendering. Um, you'll be able to see it's really not that difficult. I spent like like an hour one night just kind of figuring out how to do it and I've been able to do it quite simply ever since. So yeah, not difficult. Um, and also, uh, just briefly here, I'll let you guys know. So do you think that uh, if this tutorial is helpful or whatever, do you think that it'd be cool uh, if I started doing something tutorial Tuesdays or whatever like I'll put out an editing tutorial based on whatever you guys want to see um, I'll do that once every Tuesday and uh, yeah, it'd just be kind of cool you know I don't mind doing tutorials uh, I did a couple on my previous channel um, but it's nothing really and I don't mind doing it I feel very open to sharing my knowledge with you guys and all that so if it's if it's something that'd be really helpful to you then uh, leave a like and a comment and stuff just tell me if if I should and also let me know what kind of tutorials you want me to do I know I'm working on um, some new effects and stuff in this uh, next episode that I'm pulling out um, that it should be out sometime by the end of this week and it's gonna be pretty si sick and uh, but any uh, effects or whatever that you see in my videos just comment or message me or whatever and let me know because I'd be more than happy to make a tutorial on it so that would be quite neato. Um, this is dragging on. It just like froze at 294. There we go. Let's go. I'm so close. Yeah, this is quite honestly the hardest part with the whole 3D motion tracking is just sitting here waiting. There's a lot of waiting that goes on with it. All right, so there we go. The nice little sound. All right, so that means we finished the recording or the sorry um, rendering. And so we'll go here. I hate this after. All right, go here. Check out the folder, and you'll see there's just tons of little TIFF images. That's every frame in the sequence. Um, all right. So now what you're gonna do? I already have Bujou open, so you're gonna want to open Bujou. Um, grab this here. Sorry, it's being slow because I just rendered this thing out, and it always gets slow. Why is it doing this? There we go. Alright, so we're going to go here, import sequence. And what you're going to do is uh, go, it's going to load this thing up. You're going to go to your main area, to your desktop, wherever you saved it. Go to your folder, open that up. Oopsies. 
I guess, oh, whatever, I start on like the second one, doesn't matter. Anyways, you're gonna just click on the first one, um, the first frame of the sequence. I guess to click on the second, but it really doesn't matter, so it's gonna go from there. You're gonna change your frame rate to 59.94, if that's what you recorded in, hopefully it is. Hit apply, and then it's gonna change back, and then you're just gonna hit one more time, and then hit apply. Um, and then that's good, you can close out of that. All right, now what you're gonna do, so it's loaded up your sequence right here. And now what you're going to do is just hit track features and then hit start. So what that's going to do is it's going to go through the entire thing here and it's going to track all of the different individual little teeny points on the uh, on the uh, video. And so and that's going to take a while so I'll just cut it here and then be back with you in a sec. Alrighty, now that that's done. <coughs> uh, I just coughed on my own spit. That's like a really weird thing that happens to me all the time um, choking on my own spit. Sorry, anyways, uh, well, all that we're gonna do next is hit this button here, camera solve, click it, and click start, and then that's gonna take a little bit. Alrighty, and that's going fast. Alright, so as you can see here, it's taking those points, and they uh, pretty much are representing these tracked points on the different objects of the screen. So what we're going to be doing is there's one last thing before we actually solve this here and that's called uh, get setting the scene geometry giving it some like little hints pretty much on uh, and I'll show you what I mean here. So you're gonna go to scene geometry you know add coordinate from hint and then you're gonna go type uh, we'll start with x-axis and so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take two points along an x-axis so along the left or right here so uh, let's see here we'll take we'll take this one right there, hold down shift and we'll click on this one. Oh, oops, sorry. Hold on, app uh, command for a Mac. I think it's control or shift or something for a PC. For a Mac, you hold down app, uh, command. So we got two across the X plane. We'll go uh, connect to selected. So then that's connected, that's the hint right there. We're going to add another one. And this one we will set as Z. And with the Z coordinate, it's going to be pretty much telling um, the uh, front and back, you could say, of the plane that's going to be set up on, and uh, which really kind of comes in in Cinema 4D. So you're going to find one, uh, let's see here, probably running around this line, we'll say this point and that point down there. All right, so then you take those, connect to selected, and uh, there we go. So now do update coordinate frame. I just always hit that call time just to make sure it gets uh, gets good. Close it. So now it's got the hints. It's got its hints already. And uh, now what you can do is you can take this and you're going to uh, add a test object. So you see this is kind of, um, I've heard a lot of people, and it's called Ladybird. I call them ladybugs. I don't know about you guys, but when I see a little bug that, you know, I don't even know why it's called a lady, but it looks like that. I call it a ladybug, not a ladybird. Um, so it does not look like a bird to me, um, but I, unless that's like the beak and eyes, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, so it's got that there, and you can see here it's tracked very nicely. It's stuck right there, um, right in the middle of where we put our hints, and so you can see it. It put the uh, the plane right there, perfect for us. So that's nice and golden. And um, once you do that, then uh, you, you know that you're set. Uh, you can also take it 3D here and you'll just kind of see. So you see here, like this is just the points. So this up here, like right in this area, that's all the dome. This is our little plane. So you see it's like right here, it goes straight across. We've got the couple of points down there. But you so see, you pretty much know right there, if you look at this, you'll know that you have a good set because you see the two points there because because of the hints that we gave it. So you've got a point. So let's see if I can, all right, so you see that green point there? And there's another in the cluster, but anyways, it all lies. If you can see it, it all lies on that same axis, same line. So you know it's a nice flat plane. Um, and then you can just switch it back to 2D, and you'll have that there. So, uh, anyways, um, go ahead. I'm just gonna take that off. All right. So you see here, this is this is perfect. This is all you need. So now what you're gonna do is take this export camera solve, um, and you're going to want to browse. All right, so I'm just gonna set it as desktop. All right, so file name, um, uh, 3D Cine Tut. All right, 
And then it's set as Buju, you want it to be set as uh, Cinema 4D, if that's what you're using. Um, and I know there's a way to do this with After Effects. Maybe if you guys want me to, I can upload a 3D, uh, 2D motion tracking with After Effects, but that's what you do there, you set as that. But we'll stick with Cinema 4D for now. Hit save. All right, and make sure everything looks good. Um, if you're wanting to adjust the frames, you know, adjust it here. I don't need to, so I'm not going to. And that's what you do, hit save. And it will save a little um, file right there. All right, so let's slide over, double click the file, it'll open. And it might take a little bit, sorry. <clears throat> but, oh, I got a little stretching. But uh, anyway, so yeah, so that's all of the hard stuff is over now. I, not even, it, it's not hard, it's uh, the tedious, I guess you could say. All that tedious stuff is over now, because you just, you know, you have to wait a while. Um, that was a fast load up for Cinema 4D. But anyways, so for some reason for me, um, and I've seen a couple other people do it with different ways, but for some reason, it, the scale's really out of whack when you upload it in. I have to personally change the scale to like 300, or uh, yeah, I'll do 300. Um, but I don't know why that is, and I've seen other people who have had to do it with like lowering it, so you'll just have to kind of um, trial and error with this part. So you'll see it comes up, you're gonna start, create a new material, take texture, load image, and then it's gonna you're gonna open up that folder and then you're just gonna click the first one on there hit open and ignore that alright so then you'll have that there double or just click on the picture that was right there go to animation and then you're gonna take the uh, calculate frame rate and change that to 59.94 and it calculate and then that's gonna make the total number of frames alright so you're gonna get, so once you do that you're all good you're gonna go right here into this little tab and make a background, and then you're gonna drag this uh, effect right onto the background. Okay, so you can see that the plane is lying flat right on that little thing that we made, exactly where we want it. All right, so um, let's add a text here. <coughs> text object. All right, so yes, yeah, see that was even still a little bit big. I, I would have increased the scale a little bit more actually. Um, but anyway, so you have the text here. Um, I'm going to reduce it a lot. All right, so we'll put it here. Um, we'll change the text to saying uh, "tut!" Exclamation point. All right, do that. Um, change the depth a little bit. So this is all just personal preference. I mean, this isn't anything part of it. You can slide it around a little bit, um, like here maybe put it on this one and then you want to make sure you run through and make sure it still looks clean which it does it still looks good if it's just chilling on that one so that's nice um, hold on let's see something here real quick uh, it looks like it should be right okay so just for I mean you're gonna want to be a lot more persnickety about it um, when you're actually making it but uh, for now this is perfectly fine good example so you have this here um, now what you're going to do, I mean this is already running like a long tutorial here, but uh, I'll just show you really quickly how to make some really nice, just uh, kind of a cool thing. Go to your text and hit caps, I do fully cap, um, and then that's going to make that there. Cool stuff. Uh, and then you can adjust that however. Uh, you're going to take a, so you, you make a new um, material and I'll just make this material color um, red and we'll add some reflection and then lower that down to where it's just a little bit alright whatever I mean I'm totally just messing around with this so you're gonna say that the main color is red drag it on there and I'll make a new material and we'll make the new material a green for some awesome sausage of holidays even though we're nowhere near Christmas this is an early and late Christmas all right so we'll lower that down a little bit okay again you know take your time with these but you're gonna drag two of these on I'm just showing you kind of a little bit of a trick click on one hold down shift R and then hit one enter go to the next one R two you can render it out and then you have that kind of interesting looking thing here so you have that right there I mean this does not look great because it's not actually with all of the stuff 
um, like it doesn't I, I mean obviously my other ones I'll do take a lot more time with the materials and stuff to make it look nicer um, but there you go you know how to do that now and as you can see it is very nicely tracked stuck right on there um, so now one last thing I'm gonna show you guys how to make a uh, some reflections and this part can be a little bit of a hassle gonna all right put it on there like show okay now what you're gonna do is go onto the plane you um, actually hold on. we'll put some lights on first here grab a light stick it up there oops there we go give it some luminance oh uh, so anyways what you're gonna do uh, with this plane uh, and I'll add the shadow later what you can do with this plane is you're gonna take uh, the exact same background that you use material and stick it on the plane like that and then you're going to go projection frontal and then um, and so that's good right there and then what you can <coughs> sorry what you're gonna do is right click cinema 4d tags and then do compositing so now when you take a look at this here render it out Shysta. hold on I forgot to do something oh there we go uh, get rid of self shadowing and put on compositing background. My bad, I forgot to adjust the tag. That's in the tag. Now when you do this, there we go. So see it's gone. And you have a little bit of a reflection now, which looks nice. Um, because that was because of the light though. So you have this here, and you can't see the plane, which is nice. So now what you're gonna do is create another uh, light. Stick it up there. And then go on the light, and then go to shadow 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 map soft and then change the density to about uh let's try 67 sure we'll render this out all right so then you can see there's some shadows there it goes on either side um and you take it out over here and i mean you want to adjust the plane accord accordingly uh, make the plane a little bit nicer and stuff um and adjust where your light's at because depending on where your light's at so say it's a lot closer or say it's up farther then that's going to make the um, shadow a little bit different. So, you know, just play around with it. But that's how you make the shadows. Um, and so you'll just kind of play around with it. Uh, and then when you're done with it, go here to your render settings. Uh, make your frame range all frames or from whatever frames you want it to be at. Frame rate 59.94, uh, which is six, uh, whatever. I don't actually think that matters. Anyway, so make sure, make sure it's all frames. Go to your save file um, tut exclamation uh, go ahead and hit save there make your format a QuickTime movie uh, go to your options and uh, you're gonna hit compression type h.264 and then 59.94 frames per second you can hit OK and then you are good to go then you can go back to the beginning click it and there you go you are rendering your 3d cinematic motion track thing I should have said that your 3d motion track cinematic there we go uh, so yeah guys I hope this helped um, if it did leave a like leave a comment if you want me to continue doing tutorials for you guys let me know I'd be more than happy to um, and just let me know what you want me to do next so I hope this helped you guys out and do enjoy making some awesome 3d tracked cinematics see you later guys